Potter's Field? You guessed it. I write for a magazine. Can I ask you a couple questions? Yeah, sure. Who's 86721? I don't know. Some guy. Unidentified. No idea at all. Nope. Or he wouldn't be here. Who buried him? County. Thanks, I appreciate your... Something wrong? Well, I thought I saw someone standing over there. No way. When we plant them, they stay planted. Thanks again. I couldn't help noticing the silence as I passed your office. The political piece was due yesterday in your county office. You've guessed it. Tomorrow. Doesn't have to be deathless prose, you know. I'd settle for just the facts in some kind of readable form. You been feeling all right lately? You don't like my last article? May have been a good idea six months ago, but today it's just old news. All we need is something fresh and original, with human interest. Relevance and heart. I wish I'd said that. <laughs> you have. Hey, Ted. Ted, I've got an idea. You know, everyone's heard of Potter's Field, but who's ever been there? So I said to myself, Hey, maybe there's an article in it. Is there? Well, I'm not sure yet. Hey, how about something with some life in it, huh? Some excitement. Like my flying school. To get high in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> you want advertising? Pay for it, Johnny boy. Does Potter's Field need advertising? Well, there might be some human interest angle. Sounds deadly dull if you ask me, Bob. Uh, no pun intended. <sighs> hey, are we going to dinner? I wish you guys would get your own dates instead of horning in on mine. That won't be for long. You're just marrying me for my martini. Oh, come on. It's get, uh, getting late. It's getting late. Okay, okay. Where are we going for dinner? Where are we going? Yeah, there's a couple no, of new don't spots. Know. I don't know. Nobody ever tells me where we're going for dinner. Why don't you just get in the car and be quiet? And I just...
Danny. Hmm? For your thoughts. <laughs> you think that's all they're worth? Mm -mm. But wherever you were tonight, I certainly would like to have joined you. Sorry. Your job? I'm not exactly setting the world on fire. You do all right with me. A little nightcap. Mm-mm. Beauty sleep. Sorry. <laughs> Take care. You too. Shoot some straight pool. Hey, Bob, aren't you talking?
I know it's hard to believe, but it looks just like me. It dresses like me. One minute it's there, the next minute it's gone. You don't think I'm cracking up, do you? No, I don't. But well, what then? Because I think I know what it is. Here it is. It's a doppelganger. A ghostly counterpart of a living person. Oh, come on. My own ghost? No. Somebody else's. It's a spirit with no memory of its former self before death and no identity of its own after. All that reading you do finally paid off. Why me? I don't know. What am I going to do about him? It. It attacked John in the rec room. He thought it was you. Why? Why haunt me? Why attack anyone? What does it want? If it's true to its form, it... it wants to take over your mind, your body, your personality. It, it needs a place to live. Oh, great. It needs me alive, right? It's got to weaken you, wear you down, make you susceptible. I won't let it. If it can't take you without force... It's already used force. It's used force on John. Oh, Bob, I'm frightened. You're frightened. Honey, I'm scared to death. fight you. You can't just take over my life like this. Bob. Ted, I, I can explain. Bob, what is this gibberish? I thought you were finishing up the political story. I was. I will. I hope so, for your sake. Bob, this is rather awkward. One of the secretaries left a petty cash box on her desk when she went for coffee. Some of the money was taken. Not a lot, just a few dollars. So why are you telling me? She says she saw you walking away from her desk when she came back. It wasn't me, do you understand? Take my word for it, it wasn't me. All right, all right. Forget I mentioned it. Tycoons.
Bob? Look, is, is something wrong? I heard about John mistaking you for somebody else, but it was a misunderstanding. Knock it off, will you, man? It's hot enough in here. What are you trying to do, kill me? When I heard what happened to Mark, I thought we should talk. I couldn't have been in the steam room with you. I was in my office clear across town. I only know what I saw. Look, he tried to kill me at the elevator. The doppelganger? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nisa, tell him, will you? Never mind, Nisa. I know that you're in a ghost and goblins, and maybe Bob is too, but John and I aren't. All right, something went wrong with the elevator. A mechanical failure. Then something mechanical could have gone wrong in the steam room. I saw you, Bob. It was you that racked me up real good with that pool cue. Look, I keep telling you, it wasn't me. You both know that Bob or anybody else couldn't be in two places at once, right? So? All right, then it was somebody else. The lights were dim in the rec room, and there was lots of steam in the steam room, right? Mm, there was no question. It was him. That is the point. If Bob were somewhere else and you saw him with you, then what you both saw was the doppelganger. I, I tell you, if something weird is going on here, I really don't want any part of it. Bob, we'll stay clear of you, and maybe he'll stay clear of us. Bugging me, I can understand, but why them? It's following true to form, alienating you from your friends, leaving you stranded alone with no moral support. I can do without them. But you're angry. That's what it wants, to worry you, pressure you, keep you from eating and sleeping, anything to wear you out. For how long? Or how do I get rid of it? I don't know. I'm going to keep trying to find out. I, I borrowed some books. Oh, boy. <laughs> That was him, wasn't it?
Are you in there? Herrick! What's going on? That's what I want to know. Look, Herrick, this has got to stop. You're not the only one living here. Look, Mr. Carlson, Don't I... look me. I've got other tenants complaining. That TV or whatever it is blaring all day long while you're out. I checked everything before leaving. Look, are you going to unlock that door or do I have to do it? Let go! Why'd you do that? Don't touch those lights. Why not? You got something to hide in here? Good enough to take it in your fat mouth. Get your hands off me. Let go of me or I'll call the police. No. No, that, that, that won't be necessary. I apologize, please. All right. But I'm giving you your notice, Eric. I want you out of here by the first. Lunch, anyone? I'm only five minutes away. All right, honey. I'll meet you in front of the office. Okay. Again, right? Mm -hmm. You're doing it again. I'm not a bully, but I almost beat up that little jerk Carlson. Everyone at the office thinks I'm a sneak thief. My friends won't come close to me. I will. Thanks. Lisa, I don't know what's happening. You're moving out, and the doppelganger is moving in. Well, what can I do about it? Did you ever wonder who he was? Who? The dead man, the doppelganger's former self. Now, who cares? Because if we can find out who he was, maybe we can find out why he's not resting in peace like he's supposed to be. Then what? Simple. You solve his problem and you solve yours. Okay. Okay, where do we start? Potter's Field. It all began when you left there. They were burying someone. Bob. You've got to find out who he was and what he was. Because... Because if I can't stop it, that's the man I'm going to turn into. Lisa. Lisa. I thought you were going to meet me at the office. Just came back from lunch and Ted, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure. What's on your mind? I remember the uh, story that I mentioned to you. What is it? It's absolutely the end. It's never been done. Potter's Field. It's 
offbeat. It's fantastic background. You ever seen it? Ever known anyone who has? <laughs> Human interest. There are no names. Unidentified, forgotten. You know, like, uh, like the unknown soldier, just there. Nobody knows, nobody cares. What are you getting at, Bob? Well, I, uh, I, I pick out a grave, you see, with a number. Any number, like, uh, like 86721. I find out the kind of guy he was, the kind of life he led, and I put it all together, see? That sounds dreary to me. Morbid. Okay, okay, we'll hire a private detective. We'll, uh, we'll dig up something upbeat. Heart. I don't think so, Bob. Look, are you blind? Can't you see this little hypo, all this dull junk you've been putting out? I, I should have talked to you about this before, but you've got a vacation coming. I think you should take it now. What are you saying? I should, uh, I should get lost for a while. You think I'm having a breakdown or something? I think you need a rest. Take some time. When you come back, then we'll talk. Look, Ted. Take, give me a couple days, will you? Sure. Oh, the doppelganger. What? Nothing. Nothing. Six, seven, two, one, Potter's Field, right? Everything you can find out about him. Well, there may not be very much. You're supposed to be good, Mr. Ellis. I am, but I don't perform miracles. Anything will help. I'll bill your office. What's the address? No, uh, no, I'll give you my check. Oh? I thought this was a story for your magazine. What's the difference? Here's your retainer. Troublemaker. What kind of trouble, Mr. Carlson? Violent, terrible temper. He assaulted me once. I understand he's a real good friend of John Wolf. He was. They had some kind of a falling out. Well, say, here's the man you want to see. Uh, Mr. Reisman. Hi. Uh, Mr. Reisman, this is Lieutenant Maloney from the police. He wants to talk to you about Mr. Walsh's accident. What accident? Plane crash. He's critical. Mr. Carlson, that's all for now. Thank you. Oh, well, uh, anything I can do, Lieutenant. Anytime. Right. John was a real good pilot. What happened? He had a fight with a passenger. He had a fight in the air? Mm -hmm. With Robert Herrick. Uh, is, is he hurt? No. No, and that's... Uh, it's a funny thing. You see, Walsh was almost killed. The plane was totaled. Yet there's absolutely no sign of Harry. Now, how do you figure that? I, uh... 
I really don't know. You're uh, a friend of theirs. What do you think might make them sore at each other? I really couldn't say. You could, but you won't, right? I didn't say that. Oh, you don't have to. Well, you see, I, I have a hunch. It's, uh, it's a feeling that maybe you're not too friendly with Robert Herrick anymore, either. Well, why don't you ask him? Well, I intend to. I intend to do just that. Terrible. John's such a beautiful guy. Tell me, Lieutenant, what makes you think I know anything about it? You were there, weren't you? And walk away from a crack up like that without a scratch? Some people get lucky. Not me, not lately. No, thanks. Who told you I was there, Walsh? No, no, he's still unconscious. But the controller in the tower monitors the radio, and he heard Walsh arguing with you. He might have heard him, but he didn't hear me. I wasn't there. Oh. Well, if you weren't there, where were you? What time was it? Four o'clock. Dolph Ellis, private investigator. I was researching a story. Now let me ask you a question, Maloney. What right have you got snooping around leaning on me? Mr. Herrick, a friend of yours is nearly dead. He's no friend of mine. Bob. Well, that's all right, Miss King. That's perfectly all right. You know, Herrick, if Dorf Ellis does substantiate your alibi, I'm going to owe you an apology. I didn't know that. I'm sorry, please. Well, it's winning. Coroner's report. Male, Caucasian, about 30. Probable cause of death, drowning. Large scar on right side of face. Police found a body off a pier above Malibu, wearing a sports coat and slacks. No papers or ID. Oh, here's his morgue shot. Can't the police identify him? With thousands of missing persons reports every year? Body wasn't in good enough shape to even lift prints. What are you doing about it? Search the wanted flyers back 90 days, compared descriptions and statistics. Find anything? Maybe. Maybe? I'm waiting for a mug shot from Colorado. Look, time's running out. Your retainer doesn't cover giving me a hard time. I'm sorry. Sometimes I... Sometimes I can't control myself. I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you for calling. What is it? Mark's been in an accident. No. Is he dead? No, critical. First John. Now Mark. I've got to do something. Bob. You could be next. Oh, don't think about it. Listen to me. Mark and John are out of the way. You're the only one left who's close to me. 
I love you. I'm not afraid. Well, I am. You're more important to me than anything or anyone. And it knows it. You're special. It was satisfied to hurt the others, but if it hurt you, that would break me. I've got to let him have what he wants. No. No. Come in. Mr. Harry. You should have called me first. When I was passing your building? I thought you'd want to see these right away. What do you got? Danny Dennis Farrell. Half a dozen aliases. He's a button man. He's wanted in Colorado for robbery, assault, suspicion of murder. He's your man. So, now we know. The reports say that he died from drowning. But punks like Pharaoh don't usually die in accidents. He was knocked off. Isn't that police business? I thought you wanted to make it your business. Look, I can nose around a little bit. Find out if Pharaoh was murdered. It'll take a little dough. Why should I come up with more money? I don't figure you at all. First, you light a rocket under my tail to get me to identify the guy. And then when I do, you couldn't care less. It's just not worth it. Well, whatever you say. I don't know why you cared in the first place. Except that now you've got a chance to figure out what really happened to Farrell. Well, what do you say? Shall we call it quits? It's all the same to me. No. No, you're right. It's a chance. Maybe my only chance. You do whatever you have to. The sooner the better. Okay. you sitting there and then when I dived in I, I felt like I was hitting a wall I sank like a stone I was paralyzed I just couldn't move gas been inside with a cigarette. Listen, that detective's got a lead. There's still a chance. Take it, Bob, please, so we can finish this and be together. Posting found Farrell received a hard blow here. Probably died from it. And not from drowning. Very little water in the lungs. Farrell was murdered then. Well, my theory is Farrell was slugged, knocked unconscious, thrown in the ocean, and died there. Good enough for the police. Unsolved gangland murders happen all the time. That's why he's so restless. The man who killed him hasn't been caught and punished. But, uh, you lost me. Now we've got to find Pharaoh. <laughs> I 
Rodriguez here. What makes you say that? I don't know. I, I just have a feeling. This ought to convince him, prove who he really is. Faro? Denny Faro? Are you here? Faro? See this? Take a look, Faro. He's not here either. Where are we going to find him? Wonder Pharaoh can't remember. Amnesia. He doesn't know who he was or why he died. But he wants to be me. Why? Because you were the first one he saw. The others, cops in the morgue, grave diggers. They weren't vulnerable. You were unhappy with your job, down, depressed, so he latched on to you. Where you first saw him. It's not too pretty, is it? No. Oh, wait a minute. What's that? Safety flares. We've got to finish this now. No, I don't care. I don't... I do. Come on. Pharaoh? Are you here? You hear me? Denny Farrow. This is you. The way you looked before you died.
Remember when you were Pharaoh. Remember who you were. Someone killed you. The police know you were murdered, but they don't know who did it. Do you, Pharaoh? Maybe you'll find peace, too. There's a murderer in this town who's in for a very rough time. 